Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in anticipation of the upcoming Avengers Endgame movie, a bunch of us doll artists got together to do this epic Marvel collab. Here's an awesome group photo made by Ali Kazam, which we'll show again at the end of the video. Participating in the collab along with myself are The Doll Mill, Hexian, Anastasia Custom, Kara's Workshop, Dollumentary, The Dolly Geek, My Minimon, Creatures de Lau, HLE Crafts, Ten Dance Oak, Ali Kazam, The Doll Fairy, and Tiamat Creations. Please make sure to follow the playlist I've added to the description box below so you can check out the videos of everyone who participated in the collab. The work is amazing, don't miss it. The character I chose for this collab is one of my favorite comic book characters, Angela. I'm a huge fan of Thor and first became aware of this character when reading the Thor and Loki comics in the original Sin storyline. Written by my favorite Thor comic writer, Jason Aaron. There she was established as Thor's sister. Angela is a character created by Neil Gaiman and Todd McFarlane. And while I'm a huge fan of Marvel and comics, I'm not one of those fans who's super knowledgeable about the origin stories and how the characters connect, but there's just so much to it. But Angela first appeared in Spawn, from what I understand, and she's now affiliated with the Guardians of the Galaxy comics. She's an angel and a bounty hunter, so she is immortal and hum has superhuman strength, speed, and agility, and she can fly and fight. So when I first saw the character in the comic, I knew I just had to do a doll for her someday. It looked a bit challenging with the armor, but when I found out we were doing this Marvel collab, I just knew I had to do it. So in this video today, I'll start with taking out the hair from this uh, Headless Mistress doll, and I'll also show the uh, costume construction, face up, and hairstyle. So stay tuned to the end of the video to see the footage of the final look, as well as a super cool video clip created by Tiamat Creations, which has all the characters created in the collab. So here I'm showing a tip where I use this uh, glue be gone, or it's an adhesive remover, and it's super helpful when you have all that stickiness from removing the hair from the head to remove it from your tools and from around the, the head. So I'm rooting her with this uh, Cane Kalan hair in this like ginger red color and every time I root in a similar color to like copper or orange I use this copper on the scalp first. I'm just taking little pieces of it and rooting each individual section. When I use this type of hair, I don't skip any holes because it's not as fluffy as like the alpaca and some of the yarn that I use and you can see through it quite easily. So I make sure to not only add hair to all of the holes that are pre-punched, but also punch some new ones myself just to make sure it's nice and thick. Once it's rooted, then I section it to where I know I want the part, and then I add extra hair in that area just to make it extra full so you can't see the scalp as easily. So the Angela, the hairstyle that I'm doing on Angela is sort of a long bang, so I sectioned it so that it pushed the rest of the hair back because I knew she had a headpiece and then I just rooted some extra hair along that bang line and then I use this Fabri-Tac and make sure it gets all inside covering all of the holes and let that dry for probably about two days So to make the costume, I'm doing a typical short, which I make on a lot of my other dolls, so you can see that in some previous videos, how I make that, and I just kind of cut it by eye because I've made so many of them. For this doll, I'm going to be using or showing a lot of skin. She has a very skimpy costume, so when that happens, I make sure to cut, uh, trim all the little lines and pieces of plastic in the seams and then sand it down. So I'm using a piece of brown vinyl to make a belt. I also used the vinyl to sew up a couple of 
bands for her legs. And I'm just cutting this to size. The belt that the character has is a wide belt. I used several different reference photos. Most of those I showed at the beginning of the video. And I kind of mixed and matched uh, some of the characteristics of each costume. So I'm using some of these fancy jump rings for a buckle. And I'm using my wire cutters and needle nose pliers to shape it into a buckle shape. So I add that one piece of wire to the jump ring and that will create the buckle. And then I sew it onto the belt and punch a hole. So I shaped it into a square shape because that's what the character had. So I punch the hole and pop it through and then stitch it around. And that's how I make most of my belts. So Angela has this uh, ribbon. I'm not sure of the purpose of it. If anybody knows and is a fan of the comics and happens to know what this ribbon is that she wears, let me know. But I just took some black ribbon and painted the uh, little flag type things that she, she has on there. She has some gold X's and red dots. And then I sealed it. So for the armor on the costume, I'm using Warbla. And this is the Black Warbla, which is a little bit thinner, I think, than the brown. In the last collab, which you can check out in the iCard, uh, the last collab I did was a uh, video games collab, and it was super fun to do. Um, I used Warbla for that as well, a little bit more armor even for that one. And, well, actually, I just made some swords, but um, it seemed to be a lot more elaborate. Uh, I have some more information on Warbla and you can check out a little bit more how I use it there. So I'm using some clay tools to shape the um, sort of bra that she's wearing. Uh, it's I guess it's like chest armor. And so I'm shaping that because I added a little bit of thickness to it because I wanted to make her a little bit more busty like the comic book characters tend to be. And here I'm just using a white watercolor pencil to mark where I want to cut it. With Warbla you uh, heat it and then mold it and then it, it cools very quickly so you have to work fast. And it also can stick to the body so after you, after I did this, I had to resand the body down to get rid of all the markings. So I'm just shaping that to her, and then I'm cutting some little strips to add the detail. So Warbla's, Warbla is a thermoplastic substance and you just heat it and like I said it, it sort of melts but it just becomes moldable and then cools very quickly. So the possibilities with it are endless but it is a little bit challenging to work with. It's not as easy as I'd hoped when I first started using it but it's fun to use and you can do a lot with it. Since I sell my dolls, I like to use the Warbla since it's a harder substance than a lot of armor can be made with, um, with like fun foam, which is also very cool. But uh, since I sell my product 
dolls or sell my all my dolls I like to um, make them a little bit more sturdy and use the warbla so one thing about warbla is it has a texture on it and to smooth out that texture I like to add the wood glue and then I add a layer of wood glue to it and let it dry overnight and then I can paint it or sand it or whatever so like I said, I'm removing the, the the seams on the doll and then sanding it down because we are seeing a lot of skin here. <laughs> so Angela has this amazing leg armor that I thought when I first saw the doll, like I, or like I said, I first saw the character and wanted to do a doll of her so badly, but I thought, oh my gosh, how in the world am I ever going to do all that armor? And then I decided to just give it a shot and use this warbla. So all of the warbler is removable and I made it in sections so she can still bend her legs and arms. And like I said, one of the one of the best features of warbler is that you can just cut it to shape before you heat it and mold it. And then you can cut it again and shape it again. And so I made it this way, keeping the backs opened so you can remove each piece. Then for the next piece on the knee, it's going to overlap that piece, but I still want to keep them separate, so I'm covering it with some washi tape to protect it. So I cut these pieces out and I'm heating them up and shaping them to the knee. In the description box below, I have some links if you're interested in purchasing some Warbla. It can be a little bit pricey, but you use a small amount since you're working with dolls instead of what it's typically used for, which is costumes. So you would use a lot more for that, of course. just trying to I'm using this tool I'm not even sure what this is it looks like a dental tool or something <laughs> but I'm using that to uh, to shape the knee so it can still keep a knee shape and not sink into that groove so for the calf part I just heated up the warbler and then indented like sort of carved in some of the armor shape there and then like I did with the other pieces, I coated it with wood glue. So Angela has a few weapons, but the one I chose to do is a sword, since I could stick it in the back of her costume, or she could hold it as well. And I started out using one of these stir sticks from uh, Starbucks, <laughs> or I, I guess Starbucks uses the plastic ones, so I'm not sure where I got this, but it's a coffee stir stick. And I shaped it with an X-Acto knife and then used some wood glue or uh, I used some uh, hot glue to, no, what glue did I use? I have so many glues. I, <laughs> I think I used super glue to adhere these pieces to the side for the handle. And then I coated it with wood glue to give it that smoothness and 3D effect. I've been using wood glue a lot lately and it has a, a lot, it's very versatile. I can use it for a lot of different things. So I recommend you put that in your arsenal. So I cut it and sanded it down and then, yep, it's uh, super glue that I use to adhere them to the sides and then just to give it more sturdiness mainly I use a lot of wood glue around that area um, not only did I add this one coat but I went back and added several coats around that area where I adhered those pieces just to give it more substance and so it wouldn't break so 
So using the same technique as the legs, I made these this armor for the arms and her mask, which I'm super happy with. I'm very happy with how the mask turned out. I have made some masks in different ways before and have always wanted to try it this way. And while I can always get better and better, um, this is my first try, I'm very happy. So I'm using this rub and buff. It's like a sort of a wax paint and um, you can use it with different uh, pressure, different amounts of pressure to add as much as you want. Since Angela is, uh, her armor is really gold and shiny, I'm using heavy pressure to put that on to the product and that way it turns extra shiny. But if I wanted to show more black, I would go a little bit lighter. So I'm just being careful around the, the seam area because I want to keep some of that black just to en enhance or accentuate the texture that I created. And so I did this to all of the pieces. I'm using this sponge. This came with my pan pastels. It's a sponge to use pas with pastels, but I use it for a bunch of different things. It's good to um, get in those smaller areas and it kind of acts the same as using my finger. The pan pastels are what I use for my face ups for the pastel and the supplies that I use are in the description box below. I also have a supply video where I share the supplies I use most often so make sure to check that out. It's in my playlist or you can also click on the iCard. So this rub and buff is supposed to be like a finish from what I understand. I'm not super sure of that, but um, I've only used it a few times and uh, I've tried to use it as a finish before without sealing it and it seemed to come off on the doll. Like, so I'd always give it a coat of, um, I think I used Mod Podge, just use some regular like matte Mod Podge for this just to give it a coat of sealant so it doesn't come off on anything. I used some of the same similar uh, paint for the silver parts of this. And then I'm just using some red craft paint for the detail here. So with this product, it's all about pressure. I'm using more pressure where I want more of the color to show up. And of course, less where I want it to look a little less uh, gold or silver. So here I'm actually creating a, an effect. This, the sword has sort of like a, a peak or a, a line that goes down the center. And by using different pressure, I can kind of give the illusion that that line is there. I'm using some of these embellishments to add some gold to the top and a little gem for the center. And doing that on both sides. I'm using super glue for that. Now 
and onto my favorite part, which is the face up. So like I said, I'm using Headless Mistress. And I thought her, I'm mainly using her because of her body type. She has a much um, stronger, she's taller, stronger, uh, like more muscular than the other Monster High dolls. And uh, I thought she would do well with that armor. So I start out by giving her about four or five coats of Mr. Super Clear and letting that dry for about 20 minutes. And then that gives me a nice tooth to start with. And the I shape the eyes first with some white Derwent watercolor pencil. And then once I'm confident with the shape, then I start adding in the upper lid and lower waterline. And now I'm doing some shading with a mixture of different shades of uh, sort of browns and peaches for the shading of my pan pastels. Like I said before, my supplies are listed in the description box below along with affiliate links. So if you make purchases through those links, it helps me and my channel uh, well, it helps me by giving, I get a small uh, commission from any sales through those links. Whether you're making the purchase for that particular product or not. So I'm using some white for highlighting the forehead, nose, and cheeks, and chin. And then I'm getting some darker shades to contour the cheekbones. After I chose to do Angela, I realized one of my favorite parts of working on these is doing the eyes, and then I realized Angela doesn't have any irises or pupils, <laughs> she just has white eyes, so I was kind of bummed. But then I was, I really enjoyed working on this face-up more than many of the face-ups that I've done in a long time because I was able to concentrate on everything else and give her uh, this really like stern, uh, empowered expression and just gave a lot of detail to the waterline so I felt like I was giving extra effort in other areas and it was a lot of fun so there I was reaching into my um, old pastels where I have uh, Rembrandt, a Schmenka, and Sennelier and just some of my really good old pastels that I pull out once in a while when I need different shades of red because I only have this one red for, from Pan Pastel and I think they've since come out with a lot more colors so I need to pick some of those up but um, I find that the Pan Pastels tend to work um, just as good if not better than some of these more expensive brands. Um, the Pan Pastels aren't inexpensive in themselves but um, they are artist grade. but some of these are really good products and I don't like them as much as the pan pastels. I really like pan pastels. So I'm just using some black to give a, like a little bit of a smoky eye, not too much since she wouldn't be wearing too much makeup. And just blending that out. I find that using the pearlescent black pan pastel tends to blend out a little bit better than the regular black when I'm doing around the eyes. And here I'm just using a makeup brush to add some blush to the cheeks. It's a really soft bristle brush and it works well with bl for blushing. So if you're new to my channel, welcome and thank you so much for checking out my work. Um, just to share a little bit, I'm a doll artist based in North Carolina and I've been customizing one-of-a-kind dolls since 2012 
and the videos for most of my dolls are here on YouTube so make sure to check out and check check those out and hit the subscribe button to see the future work and also check out my playlist since there's lots lots of historical face-up videos and tutorial videos and so I sell all of the dolls that I make so check out my Etsy shop in the link below and over the past year I've been working mostly on commissions but I do make collections about quarterly which sometimes make it into the shop um, but send me your email address if you'd like to be on my mailing list to see when those are released. I give um, those on my mailing list the first dibs on new dolls. So all of the links to my shop and my email address and all of that info is in the description box below. So I'm going back in with my Derwent watercolor in white. I tend to use this watercolor uh, for all of my white, either that or my Caran d'Ache, which if you've watched my previous videos, you know Caran d'Ache is my absolute favorite, but I have one pack of those and they're uh, a little pricier than the others, so I tend to reserve those. There's one that I'm using now for some line work on the uh, upper lip, but Derwent tends to be pretty soft, or really nice and soft, so it's good to add like a bunch of color with those and then when I'm doing the fine lines I used, like to use my Faber-Castell aqua grip or art grip aquarelle which are a harder lead or uh, core it has a harder core so it sharpens nicely and stays sharper This is my, one of my favorite Castell's sharpenable eraser, and then I'm switching over to that Tombow mono eraser. It's a micro eraser. They both work well, but I guess I was trying to find the right one to use there. For the eyebrows, I'm doing some shading and shaping with some pan pastels in a like a burnt sienna color or terracotta maybe, and then adding some of the um, some of the hairs in the eyebrows with that Faber-Castell Art Grip pencil that I just mentioned. Blending them out in the center, I felt like it was a little heavy towards the center of the forehead, so I'm blending that out with some Colorless Blender by Pan Pastel. And then adding some white for highlights and blending it out with a Q-tip. I'm adding a little bit of highlight to the arch and then making sure those eyes are super white and giving a little highlight to the upper lid. So since there's, um, Angela, it looks like her eyes are glowing a little bit. I'm doing a little bit more highlighting under the eye and upper lid with a little bit of yellow and white just to give it a little bit of a glow. Now I'm adding some of this shimmer powder. I use some white actually directly onto the eye and then I added some of the yellow shimmer and yellow and white right under the lash line. Oh here I'm adding the, the lashes first. Okay, and now I'm using this pearlescent or shimmer powder to just add a little bit more of a glow under the eye. And then I'm using this Perfect Pearls in white to give it a little bit more glow right under there as well. 
Just want to give a little bit of an illusion that her eyes are glowing. Now I'm adding the sort of lightning bolt shapes under the eyes that Angela has. And I'm using the Caran d'Ache in red. Like I said, I love Caran d'Ache. It's my favorite watercolor pencil for customizing. It's so super soft and creamy and just goes on so heavy and smooth and dark and it's I just can't say enough about them I'm not associated with them or affiliated in any way to Caran d'Ache but if you can afford to use a really good product then I would highly suggest these they even stay sharp pretty well for fine lines also as well so it's just a good all-around watercolor pencil for face-ups and this is the Caran d'Ache Museum Aqua Rel there's also Supra Color which I also have but they're not as great they're okay they're kind of comparable to like a Faber-Castell but and there she is, there's her face up. It feels so funny not adding the eyeball or the iris and, <laughs> and people in. It's just so odd, but that's her. So I'm just adding some final highlights, the dots in the eyes and blending out some highlights on the forehead, nose and chin also just for some final touches and on to the hair so since her hair is um, sticking straight out I want to do some work to make sure it lays a little bit flatter this cane Kalan hair can be heated but it doesn't curl very well So I'm just giving her a trim, just pulling down each piece and cutting it to length and then I'll go back and add a few layers so it falls nicely and isn't as heavy. I used some um, thinning shears to take out some of the weight and I didn't want, when, when all of this hair was on her head, if she'd stand up straight, the head would kind of flop back. <laughs> so I had to make sure to cut it and thin it out a little bit. So I'm just dampening the hair a little bit to make sure I'm giving her a nice precision cut. And I'm taking some gel, just some just some cheap um, hair gel I like to put in most if not all of the doll hair that I do it's not heavy or sticky but it helps it maintain the shape and it's just like plain unscented gel so here I'm sectioning out the top just to give it a few layers I'm measuring against her face where I want those layers to fall. I want it to be under her jawline, so I'm making sure not to cut any higher than that. And I'm chopping up the ends to just give it a little bit of movement and thinning it out a little bit. Make it a little more natural looking at the ends. Sorry about all my junk in the background. I'm working in my workspace, which is in we are uh, full-time travelers at this at the time. And if you're interested in seeing what my art space looks like, I have another video that shares with you our, my art room in our RV during our travels, and it's kind of interesting. So I'll put that in the i card. So just doing more layering. And now the hair is pretty nice and thinned and shaped. 
um, just adding a little bit more thinning, like I said, with those thinning shears. And you can find those at Sally Beauty Supply or just beauty supply stores in general have those. I've added several, several layers of Mr. Super Clear to protect the face because I'm flipping this damp hair into her face and I'm watching it going, oh, but I always make sure to add several layers and so I don't have an issue. So I'm using this little mini flat iron that's been through some things because it's so super dirty. It's I've tried to clean that off, but uh, it's old and I've used it for so many wild different things with these dolls. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm using that little mini flat iron just to really mainly um, flatten the root so that it'll lay down a little bit nicer to, and it still sticks up a little bit because of this type of hair, but it worked out pretty well. So after I heat it, then I kind of put my palm over it and almost burn myself in the process to hold the hair down for it to lay better. And there I think it looks pretty nice. I Also in the comics, her hair kind of is a little um, up there because it's it moves a lot and she's very active, so I was happy with the way it was laying. And then I just played with it a lot because I was really enjoying this hair. <laughs> I'm using a razor to do some razor cutting around the face there as well. So I'm just adding the costume and here she is doing some fan for some movement. On that belt I added some of the studs and um, gave her a little skirt for the back. And that was so much fun. I really enjoyed making this doll more than any that I've done in so long. It was so fun. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like it, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out all the videos from the other doll artists in, this, in the collab. They are totally epic. I cannot believe the talent. So make sure to check those out. The link to the the playlist should be in the description box below along with the names of all the other artists so check those out and subscribe to their channels that would be great and thanks so much for watching i hope everybody has a great day thanks and go see marvel's uh avengers endgame i'm so excited i have my tickets bye